Heige, and Nelson Barber, Charles Taze Russell, Three Worlds. We're in the chapter of the Seven Trumpets, and then the last segment, Barber Russell find the year 1840 predicted the fall of Turkey as a world power and the beginning of the Advent movement, all predicted in scripture chronologically to the day. Now he's dealing with the two witnesses in chapter 11 of, of Revelation. That the two covenants, the one graven on stone and the other on the fleshly tablets of the heart, the one on the plane of the flesh, the other on that of the spirit, the old and the new covenant or testament are the two witnesses of Christ is placed beyond all doubt by his own words. The scriptures spoken of by our Lord were the Old Testament. No other was in force, and the dispensation of the Spirit, or New Covenant, did not commence until the day of Pentecost. Now hear the words of the Master. I receive not testimony from man. Is Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever? Then how shall man fill the picture of my two witnesses? That is described after Revelation 11, verse 3. Jesus names his two witnesses. Will you take his word? Or do you prefer the silly interpretations of the day that make two men or bodies of men of sufficient importance to fill the prophecy? Hear his own testimony. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they that testify of me. That's John 5.39. Here is one, but where shall we find its mate? John bears witness. John bear witness to the truth, but I have a greater witness than that of John. And yet John was the greatest born of woman. Where are the advocates of two personal witnesses to find their men? They cannot be born of woman, and yet be the witnesses to which Christ refers. The works that I do bear witness of me. In verse 36, that is John 5:36. Is the New Testament of his blood confirmed by the death of the testator? having Jesus Christ the chief cornerstone and Jesus Christ the capstone a record of him and his works then it is his second witness Revelation 11 is of course a symbol oh boy Revelation 11 is of course a symbol and the time that measures it was is symbolic and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth was fulfilled during the 1260 years of the control of this man of sin when these two witnesses were by legal enactments kept from the people and under the veil of a dead language these two witnesses were put to death by illegal enactment in the in that great city spiritually called Sodom and Egypt and for three and a half years during that great infidel revolution which swept over Europe at the close of the last century they were abolished by law immediately after which they were exalted to heaven. The Bible societies of the present century have made them a living reality among all peoples and tongues and nations and languages, and their enemies have beheld them. During that ter terrible revolution, the tenth part of the city fell, that is France, one of the ten, and in the earthquake were slain of men's names 7,000. All titles, both in church and state, were reduced to the one common name of citizen. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly, and the seventh angel sounded. Now, of course, probably don't have to say it, but all of this has been dumped. Can you imagine the society today saying that the Bible societies, which were had, had arisen right after the French Revolution, that they fulfilled the, uh, the role of revealing the two witnesses to men, making them available in all nations and languages. During the 19th century, before Russell came along, the seventh trumpet begins with the proclamation that the time has come that the kingdoms of this world belong to our Lord and his Christ, and that he is to reign here on the earth forever and ever. That proclamation has been sounding for the last 38 years. Now, this is written, published in 1877. So from 1839 onward, 1840 onwards, they've been proclaiming this, the Adventist movement as a whole. And many are just beginning to hear and believe it, that the saints are to be kings and priests and reign on the earth, and that when the kingdom is the Lord's, all the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And again, they've scrapped that one. The priests are not to reign on the earth now. They're to reign in heaven. And the Advent movement, notwithstanding all its mistakes, all its errors of judgment, 
and all its human weaknesses has been fulfilling this part of the seventh trumpet. The reproach was because the message itself necessarily attacks a deep-seated and fully believed theological error. If the saints are to be kings and priests and reign on the earth forever, the doctrine of dying and going to some other world for our reward and future home is, of course, an error. Revelation 10 is a prophetic history of the message. The open book is the unsealed prophecies. Shut up the words and seal the book even unto the time of the end. Daniel 12 verse 4. The Advent message claimed the time of the end had come and that the book was open. The eating of the book can be understood. Thy words were found and I did eat them and thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. Jeremiah 15 verse 16. And to those who love the appearing of our Lord, the message was sweet as honey. The bitterness which followed needs no explanation to such as know the bitterness of the disappointment of the tenth day of the seventh month of 1844. And the last verse of Revelation 10 is now being fulfilled in this midnight cry and harvest message. The two movements or messages are also given in Matthew 25. The first one in which the virgins are represented as going forth to meet the bridegroom prior to the disappointment is from verse 1 to 5 and the last from verse 6 to 12. The one was to end in the bitterness of disappointment and the other in success. I'll put in a link to more disappointments and really an even greater insanity of interpretation. That is the finished mystery in 1917. The book that shook Vivian and I right out of the watchtower. So, so absurd were its interpretations. Because, like Barber and Russell, the brothers who were associated with Rutherford at that time thought it's all about us. 